I'm making this video to answer some frequently asked questions about what Curtis and I are up to. And this is what we're up to. We have moved into a camper, a fifth wheel camper trailer. I'm here to satisfy all of your curiosity about what we've been doing and how it's going. And um, I thought we'd start with a little tour and I'll explain a little bit why we decided to move into a camper. Answer some of the questions you have about living in a camper. First we have our little entryway with the window in it and our little spot for our shoes. Up the little steps we have our bedroom. Um, had just like updated their mattress and it's like a fancy memory foam kind of mattress. It's super cozy. Which my mom found out the first day she came to visit. She was really tired after work and she plopped down and fell asleep for like two hours in our bed. So thanks mom for testing it out for us. And uh, we'll just go up here so you can kind of see. That's our squeaky stair. Needs some work. Got a window on either side and there's a little drawer and a little closet. Um, we keep our Sunday clothes in there, um, just kind of out of the way where they won't get messed up. You can see the super cool uh, fruit theme wallpaper border and these lovely valences from the 90s. Those are all coming down in our, our little remodel that we're going to do over the summer. And we've had a lot of questions about living in our camper in the winter and whether we've been able to stay warm. And if you look down here next to the bed, that's the little heat vent. And over here on the wall, there's a little thermostat. This is our closet. And this is one of the things I get the most questions about, like how do you fit all of your clothes and shoes and stuff. And I've actually been experimenting with a capsule wardrobe, also known as the 10 item wardrobe or project 333. There's all these different ways of having like a minimalist wardrobe. One of my favorite YouTube channels is The Daily Connoisseur. Jennifer L. Scott. She has a really great channel all about minimal fashion and things like that. She's been my muse lately. And um, yeah, that's all of my clothes right there. And then my little drawer. I've got like space for my swimsuits and underwear and things like that. And then this little step down here flips up. That's where Curtis and I have been keeping like our shoes that we get really dirty. Like, my jewelry box is in that closet too, with all of my fabulous costume jewelry. Thank you, Nana and Grammy. Okay, and then this is the next most common question. Hey guys, I'm still wearing my apron from making breakfast. This is our little bathroom, and people have asked, how is that with the tiny bathroom? And it's just fine. There's our tiny toilet, and you operate it with the little foot pedals. You just fill it up with water. To do your duty and then flush. And uh, the RV campground that we live at um, has water hookups so that makes life easy. And here's our little bathtub which is serving as a laundry collection place right now which is handy. And there's a shower and a little window with a fan but we don't use the fan because um, I think one of the blades is warped when you turn it on it makes a horrible noise so we're gonna fix that over the summer. And our little orchid, which I think died because it got too cold. I don't really know that much about orchids, so if you're an orchid expert, maybe you could help me out with that. The blossoms got all waxy and then fell off. It was very strange. And then um, just a little, like, inside the cabinet storage. You know, it's handy. Little place. Uh, one fun thing that happened, like, the fourth day we lived in the camper is we we're dripping the water so that the pipes wouldn't freeze. It was really cold back in February when we moved in and we didn't open the gray water tank to let it all flow out. So throughout the night it overflowed the bathtub. It backed up the bathtub and got some carpet that used to be in this area all wet. So we just ripped it out and turns out there was some linoleum underneath. So woohoo! Uh, that was an easy cleanup and uh, maybe we'll find some cute flooring to cover that up with. I don't know. And here's our little kitchen slash living area, which I did not clean up for the video because I wanted to show you some of the 
storage challenges as well as the pros and like all the pros and cons um this table folds down into a bed but we might get rid of these benches and just put chairs in here so we'll have more space because we don't expect to ever have eight people sleeping in here since we're actually living in it and on the floor you can see we have this very stylish uh sleeping pad it was so cold and the bottom of this camper isn't insulated very well so that was just to keep our feet warm while we were doing dishes and cooking and stuff and we put one under the table too so when we were eating we could uh not have our feet freeze and then we have our little stove which is very functional and works great and a little sink which is dripping right now because it's cold outside again and i didn't want the pipes to freeze a little microwave it's kind of funny it's like a 90s microwave so it has a different dinging noise and we think that's cute and nostalgic and then some above head storage for some groceries i'm really into grape nuts right now i've eaten like six boxes of grape nuts in the last two months. I don't know if it's because we're cold. Okay, so here's our big storage dilemma. We have so many hobbies, you guys, and all of the things that go with those hobbies. So right now we're trying to put all of our skiing and snowboarding gear away uh, to make room for our summer hobby stuff. So uh, Curtis's skis are still in here and some other stuff that we're all gonna like move out this weekend. And a little box trailer that we keep a lot of our stuff in. Uh, bigger things like um, our bicycles and ski wear. We don't keep it at the same place as our trailer, uh, which is nice. Get it out of the way a little bit. And we've also tried to downsize a lot of our stuff and like get rid of old skis that we had and things like that. Um, because we're not using them and somebody else will really enjoy them. Which is another part of the reason that we moved into the camper. Because we have so many hobbies and we've been semi-transient for our entire marriage and... We are saving up to buy a house, but we didn't want to spend a lot of money on rent and uh, the camper was actually very reasonably priced and everywhere that we've stayed with it so far is reasonably priced. We're saving a lot of money by not paying rent at an apartment or a house somewhere. Um, and we have a little bit more freedom this way for our transient lifestyle because Curtis and I were very fortunate uh, early in our marriage to be turned on to Dave Ramsey by some of our siblings. And we are big Dave Ramsey fans, and we've tried to kind of follow the principle, his financial principles. It's been really important to us to stay out of debt and to have an emergency fund and to plan ahead for emergencies of life instead of pretending like everything is going to be okay and not planning for them. That's one of the reasons we're in the camper. We don't know if Dave would approve of that. Uh, he'd probably tell us we need to grow up and get better jobs, but we really like our jobs, and we've enjoyed this sort of uh, semi-transient lifestyle and moving around for work and being able to have so many hobbies. We're total millennials, like we've lived with our parents off and on to save money, and we've had house-sitting gigs, and we've lived for free uh, on the premises of some of our workplaces and things like that to kind of get away with not paying rent for most of our marriage. Uh, and we've been able to save a lot of money that way. I'm not recommending it for everybody, but that's just how it worked out for us. And we actually really like our parents. Uh, they're great people and they were excellent roommates, so thanks mom and dad and Dave and Judy. If you guys are interested in know more about what we've been up to and what our plans are and how it's been living in the camper, let me know in the comments and I'll make you another video because I enjoy making them since we are so transient and uh, we really care about you guys, our friends and family, and we want to share our life with you and know what you guys are up to. So let's keep in touch. One thing I would like to touch on in this video also is bargaining. Um, we bought the camper for significantly less than the asking price because Curtis is amazing at wheeling and dealing, so thank you Curtis. Uh, I know that in some cultures it's like inappropriate to bargain and wheel and deal or haggle and other places people think it's tacky but I think personally for us it's actually pretty cool so Curtis came in with cash they were asking 5,000 and he offered 3,000 cash right on the spot which a lot of people like because it's just right there you don't have to run to the bank run back and all of those things uh, it's, it's convenient for people we sold an international pickup truck like three or four years ago 
and the folks that came to buy it bargained with me and I didn't mind. It was kind of fun, you know, they offer uh, a price or they ask what's your rock bottom price and I say what I think be like a decent price and then they offer something a little lower and we kind of meet in the middle and they got a great truck and I got some money out of it. So it was fine with me. And my personal view is that's just part of life. Ask and you shall receive. Or like, you never know until you ask. That kind of mentality. So there, there's no harm in trying and the worst that they can say is no. And then you're just back at the original offer and if you're already there you were probably willing to spend that much anyway. Some people say, well the price is the price. I'm like. Well, yeah, the price is the price, except when it isn't, and you don't know until you ask. And if they're offended by your bargaining, then just give them the full price. Like I said, if you're already there with the money, you probably thought you would pay about that much anyway. It was it was worth it to go all the way out there to check it out. So, like I said, if you are interested in uh, knowing other things about how it's going living in the camper, uh, and you want to know about it from a buddy, me, let me know, and I'll make more videos for you guys. Hope you have a great day, and we'll catch up with you next time. Bye.